Here's Brody Brazil. You know, there's been a pretty significant trend in the last 30 years of Major League Baseball to build new ballparks in downtown environments. This was a good idea that got replicated over and over, and we've seen success in so many different places across states and cities in the United States. Here's Denver. Coors Field was built uh, walking distance from downtown. They've got a nice setting and scene there right by the train station. How about up in Seattle? Now, the Kingdom was where CenturyLink Field is, so they built the new baseball stadium just south of it. But again, walking distance from downtown Seattle, hmm, I see a port there. I see train tracks there. <laughs> Very similar to what Oakland's Howard Terminal could look like by the end of this decade. But again, two stadiums in a downtown proximity up in Washington. How about here closest to home in San Francisco, AT&T Park? Nope. Oracle Park? Nope. SBC Park? Nope. Pac Bell Park, <laughs> as it originally opened, I think it was at the year 2000. Uh, it has transformed downtown San Francisco. And Interstate 80 there kind of does divide true downtown with the south of Market area. But yeah, this is a downtown ballpark, no question about it. You can make that short walk and get to, hypothetically, the financial district. And I think this has been a model across Major League Baseball of where and how to place a ballpark. But what you're seeing here in all these aerial images, look at San Diego. It's a newer ballpark. It got built in a fairly uh, desolate neighborhood of San Diego, but you're not seeing an area where there's a ballpark and a huge parking lot that surrounds it. These ballparks are not typically being built in suburban areas. There's a lot of busyness and uh, chemistry that goes between the ballpark and its neighborhood, which in this case is a lot of downtown spots. The Twins in Minneapolis, look at Target Field, short walk away from the Target Center and the downtown hub. Uh, you can see just example after example, St. Louis. Now, Bush Stadium was always there. In fact, you can, you can see in left field there the, that small diamond. That was the location of, I think it was Bush Stadium 2. Uh, but new Bush Stadium was built just south of that, still downtown, still right in the heart of St. Louis yeah, really short walk away from the Gateway Arch over there. So the Cardinals decided to keep their stadium where it was best suited, downtown. In Baltimore, look at Camden Yards. This was the first of a generation of ballparks, that old style. They kept the warehouse. They put this thing a couple blocks away from that inner harbor right there. A great asset for downtown Baltimore. And the list continues. Cleveland. They had Municipal Stadium, which was dubbed the mistake by the lake. All right, they don't want it there. They moved what I still call Jacobs Field. It's now Progressive Field. But they moved downtown. And there's the Quicken Loans Arena. Is it still called that? Where the Cavaliers play, right next door. So they moved all their sports downtown. Well, except for the football stadium, which you can see in the top left of that picture as well. That's where the old baseball stadium used to be. So they just got closer to downtown. Houston. Minute Maid Park. It's got a dome on it, so it looks a little bit different while the roof is retractable. Right in the heart of downtown Houston, not on the outskirts at all. Cincinnati, same thing. Riverfront Ballpark was always close, but to have this ballpark stay in the downtown region, obviously strategic. So why are all these teams doing it? Because it works, because it flows with the city. If it were better suited somewhere else, that's where they'd build. Phoenix, Chase Field. Yeah, it's got to have a retractable roof on it for the temperature down there. But the basketball arena and the baseball stadium, downtown for a reason. Detroit, look what they've done with their sports complex. Ford Field is right there. Uh, Comerica Park is right next door. Little Caesars Arena is a short walk away. You can't see it here in this picture. And, and to be fair, this is really the only... Only stadium we've seen so far that's downtown that does have some parking capacity, but there's also a football field and a baseball stadium and a hockey arena and an NBA arena not far away. So it's understandable why they would need just a little bit of resources downtown for parking. But Detroit, they decided to build and I guess kind of keep everything even closer to downtown because the Red Wings always, always played downtown there. So downtown Detroit benefiting from a new ballpark. Same thing in Pittsburgh. 
right? Uh, Three Rivers was always their home. And the football stadium, Heinz Field, is just out of shot here of this photo, but it's, it's right next door to PNC Park. That is among the best settings in Major League Baseball. Downtown, yeah, technically across the river there, but still a beautiful backdrop for baseball games. Highly recommend you get out to Pittsburgh to watch a baseball game. So look at all that scenery. Those are ballparks that are going to stand the test of time. The ones I just showed you right there, I would guess right now, I would bet right now that 50 years from right now, those stadiums will be fixed up. They will still be in operation at their current location. That brings me to my next section here of replaceable ballparks. Now, these are stadiums across the league that are trying to be actively replaced and tell me what you see they have in common. Let's begin in Tampa. Suburbs. Big parking lot. Yeah, next to a freeway, that's great, but it's the Trop. Now, Tropicana Field has its own drawbacks. I don't need to go into that. Not necessarily designed specifically with baseball in mind, but they've been playing there for a long time. No surprise why they're trying to get away. And actually, I say Tampa. It's actually in St. Pete. I should have been more correct. This ballpark is not even necessarily near Tampa. It's not in Tampa. It's in St. Pete. Okay, then we get to Anaheim. It's a lonely stadium in that big parking lot. Did I read correctly? It was like 10,000 or 12,000 parking spaces at Angel Stadium. Now, the Angels are actually, well, they were, looking to not necessarily relocate because there's not really a downtown Anaheim, so to speak. But they were trying to buy this land and the stadium so that they could at least redevelop that area to build it up as its own downtown area. And an experience for fans before and after games. So there's a reason that the Angels are looking for a new home. How about out in Kansas City? Now, the football stadium and the baseball stadium, they're right next to each other, but it's kind of lonely. No surprise the Royals are trying to go to downtown Kansas City. And that is a beautiful ballpark still, but I get it. It's isolated. It's not the experience that the Royals want for their fans. And that brings us to the town and the Coliseum and the arena, which have been there since the late 60s. Big parking lot, 880 freeway, a BART station. People love to talk about that. That's it. So when we look at the A's, we look at the Coliseum, we consider Howard Terminal, I mean, to anybody who says rebuild there, can you see why every other team is not doing that? What makes you think it's going to work for the A's like that here in the city of Oakland, as opposed to, now, superimpose in your brain the Howard Terminal ballpark right there between probably in the middle of those four cranes and downtown Oakland's right there. It's a short walk away. Doesn't this look a lot more like what every other team across baseball is doing? And they're doing it for a reason. And they're finding success for a reason. They're trying to find the ultimate home, the forever home. And I don't mean just the stadium, but the site. That's what the A's are after here. Their forever home in Oakland. Because once you nail down this site, all you ever have to do is keep fixing up the stadium, improving it. It's baseball only. You never have to worry about it. Coliseum was not the forever home. Let's be honest about that. This would be a forever home for the A's in Oakland. So downtown ballparks are where it's at. There's a reason it's been successful. There's a track record there. Among the many considerations for the A's and where they should go, like Howard Terminal, for anybody that opposes it, for anybody that says the Coliseum would be a better site, um, maybe easier, but not necessarily better.